Okay, hi everyone. So thank you very much for joining us uh, today on the demo day of the Open Web Fellowship Program. Uh, so we've got dozens and dozens of people here with us uh, via YouTube and also on AirMeet. Um, and I know many of you are new to the Arweave ecosystem. Some people have been around us for a long time watching the, the ecosystem grow, others are new. So I thought just before we get started and we speak to the nine founders that are presenting today, I give us a quick overview of where the ecosystem is at. Um, so. Okay, so the Open Web Fellowship Program has been a, a six-week uh, program of events uh, featuring founders from, I think, 25 different projects, all building profit-sharing communities on top of the Arweave ecosystem. So the Arweave ecosystem is a community project to build a new web with better incentives and dynamics. This is everything from the permanence of the information stored inside the system. So we believe that when you have a web link, you should be able to go to that link forever. It should never break. Uh, right the way down to the incentives that are involved and the financial dynamics that happen inside the uh, organizations that build services on top of this new web. Web is essentially two things. It's knowledge and applications. So on the knowledge layer, the Arweave uh, ecosystem has been growing at a rate of about 35 to 40% month on month uh, for well over a year at this point. It's essentially exploding in growth. And on the application side, which is where we'll be focusing today, uh, I'll let the, the uh, what would you say, the evidence speak for itself. So we're just 104 days since the launch of profit sharing communities on top of the Arweave network. Uh, before this point, you could build applications on top of the system, but you couldn't easily monetize them. And as soon as we built this monetization system that essentially allows decentralized autonomous communities to work together to build applications on top of the PermaWeb and then to share profit as users use those applications and as well as to invest in those revenue streams, we've seen a, just a complete explosion in the number of uses of the system. Um, we're speaking to just nine startup founders and communities today, uh, but there are over 25 in the ecosystem at this point. There are frankly just too many that we couldn't fit them all into, into one demo day. So we're having a, a pitch session just a week from now that you'll all be able to tune into on YouTube as well if you would like. So as the founder of a, um, what would you say, a developer-focused ecosystem essentially, uh, an ecosystem that is first serving the needs of developers to build new types of applications that will then be applied, um, yeah, whose um, utilities and functions will then be applied to consumer-facing applications. Uh, you see a lot of different dynamics at play. And, and one of them that we've been watching for the last two years is essentially the, the hackathon process. So in a typical hackathon for a, a crypto project or a base layer chain, what you get is that people come along, they build an application, and after the uh, hackathon is over, they receive a prize, and then they go about their lives, and the, the projects tend to not um, not get so far. The notable, um, let me say, counterexample to this is the Ethereum ecosystem, where there have been some great projects that have come out of hackathons, but largely the, the follow-on rate is about 10%. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to say that this is the end of the second um, program that we've run since the birth of profit-sharing communities, and the follow-on rate's been something like 90% from people that finished the first program and are still continuing to build uh, the same application today. And that's really incredible. And it just shows, uh, yeah, this ecosystem is blossoming and, and growing at an amazing rate. Uh, so not just these applications, all of the programs, sorry, all of the apps that you'll see today have real users in the world. They're not just a kind of MVP or a test or an experiment. These are real startups and real applications. Many of the founders that you'll speak to today have essentially quit their jobs and, and committed their lives to building these applications. And on top of the real users here, you'll also see that there are real communities around them. I, I tried to total up today the number of um, users that there are across all of the different social channels of the communities that you'll see today. But there, there are so many, it's very hard to count anymore. It's well into the hundreds, probably over 500, near a 1,000, which is just absolutely incredible. So these are real startups, not just hackathon projects. And not just that, this isn't just a normal ecosystem fund. So one of the things we've been thinking about very carefully in the Arweave core team is about the incentives of uh, crypto development focused or developer focused networks. 
And, and what we see in the space at large is that there's in general a, um, a focus on ecosystem funds that provide all of the funding for applications that are built on top of the base layer system. And this, we think, leads to adverse selection mechanics. So projects that wouldn't necessarily succeed um, continue to, to grow for longer than they otherwise would do. Uh, and there essentially just isn't a, a, a functioning market dynamic inside the ecosystem. One of the things that we're just so extraordinarily excited about to, to see grow in the Arweave network is that at this point, we think that we represent approximately 10% of the capital that backs the projects that you're going to see today. Uh, and of the rounds that are being uh, raised by these founders that you'll speak to, there's approximately an 86% commitment rate. So there's 13% left to fill on average across the, across the rounds. And this is excluding oversubscriptions which are quite high among, among a couple of the projects. So this is just absolutely incredible to see. When we started this process, we expected that the, the whole idea would be to bring a whole bunch of investors together at the end to see the projects and potentially take part in funding them if they thought they were valuable. Um, but what we've actually found is that the founders have done such an amazing job building exciting and valuable projects um, that they're essentially all funded ahead of time. So while there's a little bit of space left, this is more of a celebration of where the founders are at um, than, a, than a fundraising call. So we, as the Arweave team, were just blown away by the progress that we're seeing here. It's, it's an unbelievable time in the ecosystem. It's been just 100 days. There's 25 startups on the network. Um, and of the nine projects that you'll see today, they're essentially all fully funded and building amazing projects and going to continue on into the future. So with that, I'll throw it over to Phil from R Drive, who's going to tell us about what he's been building. Phil, take it away. Hey, Sam. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Phil Materis, and I'm here to present our drive. So the cloud gives us the ability to access our files from any device anywhere in the world. But at what cost? Endless subscription fees you have to pay forever? Files that aren't really yours from a company that might not even exist 5, 10, or 20 years from now? Managing it all yourself with redundant hard drives, USBs, different dongles is even harder. And that's why apps like Dropbox, iCloud, Google Drive, OneDrive have collectively gained over 2 billion users over the years, not to mention all their files. These users pay an ever-increasing monthly bill to store and access their data, all while, being risk, all, at, all while at risk of being viewed, analyzed, or even censored by middlemen. But it's your data. You shouldn't have to worry about being able to show your kids your family photos or videos from your own childhood without the need for shoeboxes stuffed full of printouts in the back of the attic. With our drive, you can simply pay once to store your files forever. It's a new kind of file sync app that uses a permanent cloud. You can upload, download, and permanently share your files, never worry about subscriptions or your files disappearing, get end-to-end -end encryption of your private data, and they're accessible on any device. Oh, and it's powered by the decentralized and censorship-resistant Arweave network. So let's see how it works. So I've opened up my favorite browser and loaded our R Drive beta web app uh, and already logged into my existing R Drive profile using my Rweave wallet. So we're looking at our main Explorer screen and all of my drives, folders, and files. In the top right, I can see my wallet balance since that's used to pay for anything I upload. In the middle are my files and folders that I can navigate through. Um, when I click on a file, I can see more information about it as well as perform some actions like download, rename, move. Um, on the left, we see my personal and shared drives. Uh, I have my private drives that only I can write to and nobody else in the world can view, as well as my public drives that are totally open. So let's say I wanna add a new picture. I can click on new and here I can create a new folder, upload a file, create a new drive or even attach other drives. So I'm just gonna quickly upload a picture here. Each file I have to pay for, I approve the price, it uploads, and then I can preview it or share it pretty easily. Other people have been finding our apps just as intuitive and easy to use. Since our beta launch about three weeks ago, we've had around 180 gigs uh, uploaded around on 161 drives, mostly private, um, with 135 unique wallets uploaded through our web app and our beta command line interface. That's around 9,500 files, uh, totaling about 8% of the entire uh, weave. Miners have actually earned around 468 Rweave in storing our R Drive user data permanently. 
That mining fee is also where we add a 15% R drive community tip. That tip uh, is rewarded to our token holders fairly. Um, and you know, that tip is charged through any R drive app or integration. So let's look at our roadmap. Uh, it's been a really exciting quarter. We formed our, uh, our basic development team, our backend dev team. Uh, we started building our community and released our public portal. Uh, we finished our design and user experience for our apps and started our community token distribution with Aztec. Um, we're working on our education and training materials all for the launch of our uh, web app and desktop app at the end of this year. Starting next year, uh, we have our first real launch month where we're participating in a lot of marketing and community engagement events. We're going to patch any immediate issues and work on our fiat on-ramp. The fiat on-ramp will allow anyone to quickly use a credit card uh, or maybe even other cryptos, cryptocurrencies to just quickly upload their data onto the Arweave network. Um, we would pair that in the second quarter with our first version of our mobile app. Throughout the year, then we would add additional features, like for example, collaboration drives, where you can read and write uh, against the shared drives. So for example, you can have a place for you and your family to upload your pictures. And then finally, uh, we also wanna meet the market for power users and enterprises. So we wanna introduce R Drive Pro uh, and expand our market. So we would want to integrate R Drive into every workflow and content management system out there. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my great team working side by side with me. I want to thank all of them, as well as our passionate community members who pitched in so far. We have lots of other opportunities available, so I invite everyone to take a look. Um, and there's me. I've been a solutions architect with over a decade in uh, Fortune 500 IT and an RE fanatic since the test net. So reach out to me if you have any questions, try out our apps, and join our Discord to chat more. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks so much, Phil. It's been incredible to, to watch from the outside your, your journey with Arweave, uh, starting um, yeah, from a very enterprise-focused background uh, and, then, and then joining essentially a, a decentralized uh, autonomous workflow. And, and you guys have been building in public on your Discord server, which is also fascinating to see. And then obviously uh, closing your round and then being featured in Coindesk uh, through the, the length of the program. So that's amazing. So. Thanks so much, Phil. Next up, it's Cedric with Community XYZ. Cedric, uh, we can see and hear you. Take it away. Thank you. So, hey, everyone. I'm Cedric, and I'm the founder of Community XYZ. A community XYZ is the dashboard where you manage the profit-sharing communities that exist on top of Arweave. It's decentralized, it's open-sourced, and it's built on the PermaWeb. It also allows for a new financial mechanism that uh, thanks to the profit sharing communities that we will see a little bit more uh, during the presentation. So uh, the problem that we are trying to solve is that uh, in a traditional startup model, normally contributors earn no dividends. Also contributors often have little to no governance rights and the founders spend most of their time uh, trying to fundraise. On community XYZ, Contributors earn profits from the project's revenue if they hold the tokens, or they can simply sell them. Uh, by holding the profit sharing tokens also, uh, contributors have governance rights. And uh, contributors participate on the project they like most and are compensated with the profit sharing tokens that are created when you create your community. Uh, so this is a little demo of what the community dashboard looks like. Every community has a dashboard, and the dashboard is public and visible to anyone. And we also have a version of a label on the PermaWeb, which is permanent and decentralized. So even if community.xyz goes down, uh, you are still able to access your dashboard at any time. Uh, this is the tokens page, uh, where you can easily, <coughs> sorry, you can easily transfer, mint, lock tokens, and more. Uh, this is the votes page where you build your community and interact with the decisions uh, or on where your community is going. So on the different proposals that the community members share. And another great feature available on community are the opportunities, where you create tasks that are paid in your community tokens. So as opposed to raising funds in fiat, for example, US dollars, Canadian dollars, and more, uh, to pay out for the work done on your projects, you can get help right away by paying out using your profit sharing tokens minted right from your community dashboard. 
Uh, the business model, how it works, is that we charge a transaction fee uh, for each action that is done on Community XYZ, like creating opportunities, uh, voting activities, locking and unlocking tokens, or using our JavaScript library. Sorry. Uh, so uh, we know it's a business model that works. Uh, since we are live, it's a live product, and we have 25 communities and growing. So what's next? Uh, we want to build a team around Community XYZ uh, to start working right away on the extra features that we want to have. Uh, we are planning to, we started already working on a caching system, so we are planning to release that anytime soon. Uh, we want to build other libraries in other uh, programming languages for the ecosystem. Uh, we want to have documentation and tutorials for new, for new founders and builders. And we are expecting to have 100 extra communities by Q2 of 2021. So the team, the team, it's me, Cedric. I have 17 years of coding experience and uh, I started building on the crypto space uh, since 2016. And I'm a solo founder, uh, but we have been able to pull off a great product thanks to the amazing community that gives feedback and helps asking questions and they help us understand their needs, which is evidence of how powerful a community can be. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'll be happy to have a chat and answer your questions uh, via Discord by going to community.xyz-chat uh, or via Twitter or via email. And uh, go check out Community XYZ. It's live and available for everyone. Have a great day. Amazing. Thanks so much, Cedric. One of the incredible things about seeing Community XYZ progress has been that it's not just picked up for its uh, user interface, which is incredible. I think Rivals actually probably exceeds any other uh, decentralized autonomous organization um, management user interface out there right now, but also for the programmatic interfaces that Cedric and the community have been building. So there are a lot of people in the um, ecosystem that are using the JavaScript library that Cedric's created to manage, um, yeah, essentially other assets and other uh, project types uh, using the, the infrastructure that's already been made. And one of those is Gitopia. So Path and, and Faza, maybe you guys could tell us where you're at with that. Thanks for having us, Sam. I am Barth and this is Faza. Uh, we are founders of Gitopia. Gitopia, as the name suggests, is, is a vision of utopia, the Git repositories. Recent events have shown us that open source censorship is real. YouTube, a popular repository, was taken down by GitHub after receiving a DMCA notice from RIA. But luckily, it was uh, Anti Circumvention Act 1201, which EFF has been fighting hard for, and they got it reinstated. But when this happens to smaller repositories, the collaboration uh, progress is lost, along with it is a nightmare for maintainers to do that. Current problems with centralized solutions is the monopoly of centralized players. GitHub October report stated that 45 million developers are there on GitHub by 2019. It causes censorship both internally by GitHub policies and externally by countries uh, to censor their users. Uh, we, the developers who build the ecosystem around GitHub, are not part of uh, its product decisions. We don't make, get to make its policies and we have no incentive in its growth. All these also causes a single point of failure where, where everything stops when GitHub is done. In GitHopia, your source code with metadata is stored across the RV nodes. There is permanent data storage. Once you push your code, it never goes down. It is censorship resistant. Also, token holders lower can take part in governance and policy making of GitHopia. Along with that, they share venue of the GitHopia platform. Hence, their incentives are aligned with product growth. Currently, these projects use us to mirror their open source repositories uh, to Gitopia. For the current allocation, we've reserved 30% for founders and team for with four years vesting, 40 to 50% we're distributing among the community over the period of next four years, 20 to 30% we've reserved for investors. Me and Faza have been open source evangelists for a long time now. We started our journey in 2015 with uh, Google Summer of Code 
and we have heavy GitHub users. And we found that this is actually the missing piece in the current decentralized ecosystem. And it's an irony that still all decentralized development habits on GitHub. Here's a small demo I've set up for you. So these are not, uh, these are screenshots of the actual app. These are not mockups. And so uh, this is the main page. So as you see, the end user only needs to add a Git remote Gitopia, which we provide through NPM. And uh, then they can use the Git command line directly and they do not need to learn new tooling. Uh, this is the Gitopia repository on Gitopia. These are all the repositories we will uh, push to Gitopia under the address. Uh, so all our current users are on GitHub so re to reduce fi friction. We've uh, published this mirror action on Marketplace. So once a developer adds this file to their repository and they push to GitHub, it automatically pushes to Gitopia. So they don't have to worry about it. This is the action in action. And since cloning from Gitopia does not require an RB wallet, uh, so it's free. So here you can see I'm cloning a repository. Uh, it's taking around two seconds. And as you can see, all Git logs are preserved. We are different from other solutions as we provide permanent storage. Uh, we, 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 use, we are directly using out of Git and we don't uh, introduce new tooling for the developers to run. And we have built in incentivization. We've already uh, introduced Gitopia mirror action and Git remote helper. Next up, we have uh, Gitopia nodes and onboard existing decentralized projects. Also introduce collaboration workflows such as PRs, issues, and the governance workflows for communities and DAOs. Then what we've identified a problem is that small repositories who are used in larger repositories, large corporations are not incentivized or recognized anyhow. So we, we need to track these metrics and incentivize these smaller open source developments. Uh, also integrate other auth wallets for wider or option. Currently, we are raising a pre-seed round uh, to build a strong engineering team to build these governance and collaborative workflows for developer relations to drive adoption. Also redesign of the entire site for, to include all these workflows. Of course, legal accounts and cooperation. You can contact us in any of these following links. Also, I'll end by saying as code becomes law, Developers, maintainers become gatekeepers, and these financial instruments start challenging the status quo. We should reevaluate our choice of current source code collaboration platform, which is centralized, and move towards decentralization. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks so much, guys. It's incredible to see uh, real uh, crypto projects start to, to look at permanent storage to store their, their code repos. And, and where you guys are going with uh, essentially DAO governance of the code repos themselves is just like, bridge way further than anyone else has gone. It's really amazing to see. So next up, we have Sina from WeaveID, who's also building a sort of composable solution on top of Aweave. Sina, maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'd love to introduce uh, this new decentralized app I've been working on called WeaveID. Uh, WeaveID basically makes it so that you can log in or access your Aweave wallet uh, from anywhere. Let's dive in. So just a quick recap on Aweave. It's this awesome new blockchain, which has this concept called the permaweb, which is like the decentralized permanent equivalent to the World Wide Web. There's a lot of revolutionary apps that can be built on this platform, as you've already seen. But there's just one problem, the wallet key file. Now, most of you have probably already seen this. But for those of you that haven't, let me explain. In order to access most apps on Arweave, you have to manually select your wallet's JSON key file or drag it in. This adds a lot of friction to the user onboarding process, and it basically prevents mobile support. In my opinion, this flow is preventing Arwe from gaining the real-world adoption it deserves. There has to be a better way, right? Introducing WeaveID. WeaveID is a non-custodial wallet for the Arweave blockchain that lets you log into your Arweave wallet with an email and password, just like a normal app. You can import your existing wallet, and any wallet you generate with WeaveID can be saved back to your local disk. Not only is this super safe and easy to use, but it actually allows Arweave app developers to support more devices. I'm gonna show you a quick video demo of what it looks like in production. So all you do is add one line of JavaScript to your Arweave app and boom, you have a login prompt that anyone can use. When it's time to sign a message or send a transaction, another prompt will pop up for your confirmation. You can think of us as like the MetaMask of the Arweave ecosystem. Since we handle all the transactions, we're able to take a small percentage fee from every transfer and pay it out to all of our PST token holders. 
the goal is to make this the number one way that people access our Weave wallets. That way, our token holders can make some good money. Speaking of money, why don't we dive into the market? According to a recent study on Stati Statista, the blockchain industry is forecasted to reach about $40 billion by the year 2025. Nearly half of that is the market for developer tools just like Weave ID. This is an opportunity we're really excited for. We have a lot of great things planned for this next year, kicking off with our launch, this demo day, and then jumping right into adding social login support for Facebook, Google, and more. Eventually, we're going to be adding support for Ethereum, ERC20 tokens, Bitcoin, and potentially branding to the new Insta wallet name, which we've already acquired the rights for. By the end of this year, we aim to have greater than 50% adoption by all Arweave apps, and even further down the road, we hope to be the top cloud wallet. A little bit about myself. My name is Sina Zandapur, and I'm a serial entrepreneur from the Bay Area. I've been building on the blockchain for three years. Prior to this, I was a mentor, a community mentor for Blockstack, and now I'm trying to bring my talents to Arweave and continue building awesome things. If you'd like to help improve the future of decentralization, and participate in the upcoming Weave ID profit sharing token sale, please reach out because I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Sina. It's really exciting to see uh, this wallet technology being integrated into lots of the applications in the ecosystem. It essentially allows you to log in with just username and password, which is probably uh, one of the best user experiences you can get from, from any uh, Web3 setup. So the next uh, project we have is Nestland. Nestland is a very interesting um, let me say, never for us, because it's essentially a fully decentralized community-run project already. I think uh, there are currently 19 contributors to the project. Uh, and it's essentially a, a package repository for the Dino package manager. So Dino is created by Ryan Dahl, the creator of Node.js as a, as a sequel, essentially. But it was a sufficient deviation that he wanted to make in a different language. One of the things it does is load code from the internet. Um, and of course, when you load code via HTTP, the code that you're, um, yeah, that you're pulling down from the web that you're downloading uh, could change if you just use a URL. And so obviously, this is a, a great use case for Arweave where those URLs are going to be permanent. Um, and so there was a, essentially a community groundswell as part of the Dino ecosystem to make sure that they could use Arweave to host their code. And now, what, just three or four months later, I think maybe five months since the project got started, uh, the package repository that they've created has about 20% uh, market penetration, which is incredible. And it's growing uh, percent, you know, every day or, or well, every week or so. Uh, so it's amazing to see how that project has come along. But of course, we couldn't just invite a founder to talk for us. Um, so instead, what the community has done is they've put together a conjoined video uh, where they're all essentially taking us through the project. So Maureen, perhaps we can play that now. Introducing Nazotlan simple, easy-to-use module registry for Dino, powered by the BlockWave. With Nest, Dino developers don't have to worry about third-party imported code changing or going offline thanks to the ROWEAVE permaweb where it's hosted permanently and immutably. You can freely publish your code on the registry with our CLI X in three simple steps. Step 1. Install X. Step 2. Configure your module. And Step 3. Publish. Head over to docs.nest.land for more information on this process. Since its release, the platform has grown to be the second largest module registry for Deno, with over 190 modules and 50,000 files. It even has the first mirror of Deno's standard modules, also published immutably. Nest is also working on its profit sharing token to reward developers for the value they add to the ecosystem. It will be the first registry to ever do this across all languages. Nest is a platform for the people, by the people. By the people. By the people. By the people. Publish your Deno modules on Nest.land today. Amazing. Thanks so much. So next up, we have Limestone and Jacob. Jacob, can you tell us a little bit about oracles on top of Arweave? Hi hey guys. Hey Sam, thanks for having me. Hey Jacob. I can't quite um, see you. Oh, we can see now. There you go. 
Take it away. Let me introduce you to Limestone, which are oracles for decentralized finance. So I discovered DeFi roughly a year ago, and it was offering this amazing return on your crypto asset. So I identified a cool project called Bezetix and deposited my F. I waited patiently a week for the interest, but I get a notification that one of the oracles were compromised. In plain words, meaning most of my funds were lost. But I'm not the only one. Over the last year, there have been plenty of incidents connected to oracles. And in total, the community has lost more than a billion dollars. So on the flip side, oracles were this magic force that lifted the blockchain space after post-ICO stagnation and enabled different protocols to speak to each other and exchange tokens. They allowed external data from the real world to enter blockchain and most importantly, being able to see your assets denominated in USD was a huge improvement for mainstream users. No wonder that the current market leader, Chainlink, is valued at $6 billion, which is half of the DeFi space. If we could only reproduce the same amazing impact on our Reef network, but without the mentioned problems, Limestone beats a new generation of oracles. Thanks to the cheaper storage on Arweave, we can allow more players, more data providers to the ecosystem and achieve true decentralization. And to stand out among competitors, they need to offer guarantee for the price accuracy. But how do we decide if a price is correct or not in a truly decentralized environment? Because currently in Ethereum, we got kind of a decentralization theater when the market leader simply dictates the price. Limestone proposed the centralized dispute resolution mechanism called Argue when any price fit could be challenged. There are judges incentivized to make a correct choice and the dispute could be escalated if any of the parties is not satisfied with the verdict. And there are many ways you can profit from being a token holder. Providers can earn on access fees. Watchers can earn of reporting suspicious prices. Judges are rewarded for resolving disputes. And passive investors can simply deploy their tokens and earn part of the fees earned by providers or judges. Let me show you how it works in practice. That's the web portal of the limestone when I can choose among few data providers. Let's take a look at the R price over the last week. And all of the data could be accessed with a simple API and just a single line of code. The data could be verified with a R with signature. And if the price looks suspicious to us, we can raise a dispute, providing a name of the dispute, selecting an amount of tokens to initiate challenge and providing descriptions. And if I log in as a judge, I can vote either to support the challenge with my tokens or vote against it. So Argue protocol is at the final stage of development. And in the next few months, I'm planning to have more integration with other Paramount web app. Currently, Veritor is started to integrate with Limestone and get more than 50 data providers. And following that, I'm planning to build more advanced Oracle and start to explore the service to other chains. Because Limestone could be used beyond simply feeding pricing information. It can fetch all of the data from external blockchain and power cross-chain bridges. It can also fetch data about user identities, allowing to fully recognize and reward content creators or enable professional business use cases like agreement processing. And finally, the protocol could be used to verify the accuracy and truthness of any content. Finally, building a tool to tackle fake news. So if we can store any content permanently, let's better make sure that it's on the highest quality. I'm a software engineer over 10 years of experience, four years in blockchain. I used to be a CTO over blockchain. 
award-winning company, and recently I won a few global hackathons in the DeFi space. That was Limestone, new generation of oracles, powered by Arweave, I'd be super happy to answer all of your questions. Amazing. Thanks so much, Jacob. OK, so from uh, truthiness representations of uh, data feeds to truthiness of whether um, accounts are associated with humans or not. Fabian, can you, can you tell us a little bit about our Verify? Yes, thanks for having me. Um, I hope you can also see my screen. Uh, I'm here to present our Verify trusted verification for the Arweave network. And one problem in the current Rep 2.0 space, which we're all facing, are, is just spamming, fake news, bots, and a lot of content created by unverified users or not, not actual users. So we don't know if we are working with a robot or if we're interacting with an actual human. And the problem in crypto space is even bigger because we're just working with addresses. So we don't know if this address is computer generated, if it's used a lot, if it's used by a malicious person, a trustful person. And this can really be a problem if you have a customer faced application. And if you want to um, transport this feeling of trust and security um, to your customers. So basically, um, we are lagging trust and authenticity across the Perma web. And the solution we came up with is our Verify. And our Verify is the blue tick for the Perma web, as you know it from Instagram or Twitter. It's a single source of verification for the whole Arweave network. And what we're doing is we're associating human interaction with your Arweave wallet address. The current uh, workflow is that the user signs in with his Google account. And just the fact that this address is associated with a successful login is enough to prove the verification of this user. And um, we're not storing any personal information with the user, uh, with the address, sorry. So it's just the fact that this is a <laughs> That the, um, that the verification is successful. Uh, our team, we have a lot of experience in crypto and startups. We have John responsible for development, and also the co-founder of Birdo. We have Jacob responsible for the design and me responsible for project management and also a little bit of development. There are two main ways to get verified. They are all very simple. One is getting verified on our own website on ourverify.org. You just log in with your Arweave wallet address. You sign in with your Google account and that's it, you're verified. But there's another way, even other applications can implement the exact same process using our library in the application. So there's no way, uh, no need for other applications uh, to redirect the users to our site if they are not verified. And if verification happens through another application, um, then this application will get a reward. So there's an incentive for other applications to use our verify and have their users verified. Um, the responsible for the verification is the auth node. And we want the off nodes to be decentralized. So we have to create an incentive for the community to have decentralized off nodes. And we are doing this by giving the off node hoster R for providing their computational power and providing the, um, and providing the off node. Um, to implement our verify is very easy. It's just one single line of code for getting all of the information you need and just another line of code if you want to have verification in your own application. So every developer can implement it and can get the information very easily once the user is verified. There are two main use cases to use our Verify inside your application. One is verification-based login. For example, we have seen the pitch of R Drive already. So what they could do is they could um, basically lock their login to only for verified users. So there couldn't be any network of spammers or whatever to upload any data onto Arweave. And another good use case would be verification-based features. So you could have, for example, an app which has a dashboard where you can see transactional data. And if you want to do a transaction, you need to be a verified user to make sure um, the same that not any spammer or any bot is doing any malicious interaction. Next, let's talk about monetization. The user pays a fee for the verification process. And the fee is set by the community. So it will always balance itself based on the demand. And the fee is also... Um, so to say, the wall to prevent um, to have multiple malicious actors because the fee is set so high that there is no real uh, use case for any spammers to create huge networks because um, the one-time um, payment for the fee would be too high um, to create uh, this incentive. And then 40% of this fee, which user pays for verification, will go to the community. And the community member who will receive this fee will be selected based on the amount of stake which he has inside the community. 
and 60% of the fee will go to the host which provides the off node. And also the host, the host will be selected um, out of the profit sharing community based on their stake. And we're giving the host 60%. This is another incentive to have more hosts and so create more decentralization across um, the whole our verify system. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me to the following contact information. I would love to chat uh, with you about the whole idea and about the whole project. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thanks so much, Fabian. Uh, one of the things we were most excited about when we got started with the Perm Web was this idea um, that because you have pseudonymous wallets, people could have activity across different applications, show their likelihood of being a human um, essentially anywhere on the Perm Web. Uh, and you can kind of trace that activity around the network without having to reveal who the person is. You have taken this like, you know, 10 steps further than we ever imagined possible. So that's just amazing to see. Um, anyway, thanks so much, Fabian. So next up is Prashant from Argo. Uh, Prashant, can you tell us a little bit about deploying to the Perma Web? Yeah, hey, Sam. Uh, thank you for having me here. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am Prashant, and I'm here to present Argo, a one-click deployment service to put your site on Perma Web. With Argo, you now have a platform that provides all of the tools to deploy any front-end application to the Perma Web. Users will now have access to immutable, transparent, and permanent hosting so that their site can never be taken down. There were few problems we recognized with the current web deployment model, which later became our inspiration to create Argo. And these includes month-to-month -month subscription that often includes hidden fees, the ability of platform to take down your site if payments are missed, and the broken links, and result of which you will have a bad user experience. The solution to this is a front-end deployment platform where you can pay once and your site is deployed forever. With Argo, you no longer have to worry about your site being unexpectedly taken down. And as a result, you will have links that last forever. Coming to our target uh, market, a platform like Argo appeals to large demographics. This includes any front-end application developers and any organizations looking to pay once to deploy something permanently. Uh, let's a little bit talk more about the monetization part and how we are going to do that. We are will be charging the user 0.0015 AR, which will be roughly around USD 0.003 per second on build time. And uh, on average, it takes three minutes to deploy any site on RV using the Argo. And if we do the rough calculation and the revenue estimation of 1000 deployment, if we reach 1000 deployment per day, it will roughly come around 97,000 AR. And if I convert with the current value of uh, AR to the USD, it will come around $200,000. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the profit sharing and how we are managing it, how we are going to manage it. So we are built on top of community XYZ, which means all the Argo token holders will receive the tip per deployment and any service used in the app. Argo token holders can also participate in the governance. And uh, coming to the our alpha release, uh, which was we wanted to find out our traction there. And after doing our alpha, alpha release, we were successfully onboarded 35 unique users who have already deployed 26 sites. And our users are very happy with the Argo and already shared positive feedback with our team. And I'm excited to share with you two of them. And it is from the Tate and the Ausproud. So thank you guys for providing us the reviews. Uh, coming to our growth goals and where we are planning to head towards. So in Q1, we are going to have two releases back to back, which is going to be DNS integration and automated deployment. And in Q2, we are planning to onboard developer and also we are planning to release our first beta. And after Q2, we have Q3 in which we kept it for documentation purpose, basically because we, we, we expect more and more users is going to be onboarded after our beta release. So yes, there will be a lot of support which will be coming the, coming the pipeline. Uh, coming to the uh, behind Argo lies a very strong team and who are working together to achieve a single goal for providing seamless deployment experience to our users. And here I am working a fully stack developer. Mitras is working as a front end developer. Combining both of our experiences, we have around nine years of uh, enterprise application developer development experiences. Uh, if you want to learn more about Argo and see how we can help you, reach out to us over Twitter, Discord, or mail. We'd be happy to 
have a chat with you guys. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thanks so much, Krishan. It's exciting to see、uh, people on Twitter just posting about how they used you guys to deploy their perm websites、uh, just over the last few weeks. So we've spoken a lot about profit sharing communities and the profit sharing tokens、uh, that back them,、um, but now it's time to talk to Tate, who has been leading the effort to build a decentralized token exchange for profit sharing tokens. Tate, can you tell us a little bit about Verto? Sure. Thanks, Sam. Okay, so this is Verto, a decentralized exchange built on our weave. So as you just saw, there were many, many. Really cool profit sharing tokens and profit sharing communities built around those tokens on the weave, but a problem before Verto came along was that these tokens didn't have any value because they couldn't be traded,、um, and so people were building these applications where you could extract tokens. But how do you extract value from those tokens? Well, you need to trade them. So that's where Verto comes in. Verto creates value for these profit sharing tokens by allowing people to trade between、uh, R and profit sharing tokens. So, before I get started, the team behind this,、um, as you can see, we are all around the world. We have over 15 years of experience combined, and because we're international, we can literally work 24/7. <laughs> so. Okay, so this is Verto. This is the dashboard where you can monitor all of your all of the important things that that you would want to see on a profit sharing community ecosystem dashboard. So you can see watch lists of all of your tokens. You can track your asset balances. You can also、um, monitor the trades that you've made, and you can also monitor the transactions that you've made. Next, let's move on to trading. So this is our trade page where you can swap between profit sharing tokens and R. And I should mention we we take a lot of、um, we put a lot of priority on the user experience of this. We wanted to make it as simple as intuitive and as intuitive as possible.、Um, and so we're really proud of of the design that we came out with here. So next, you can discover. So Verto, in addition to be To being a trading platform is also a token discovery platform, and in turn, it's a profit sharing community discovering platform. So through Verto, we hope that users will be able to, you know, not only trade but also see the tokens being traded and discover the communities from the tokens page. So one one massive thing that we're really excited to announce is our Ethereum bridge, which we've been working on for a very long time now, and we're very excited to finally get it out into the wild.、Um, so in a few days, you'll be able to see this live. But right now, what it allows you to do is it's going to allow you to swap between Ethereum and R, and also Ethereum and profit sharing tokens. So it, in order to to Support this infrastructure. We modified the whole Trading Post code base, which is what Verto is powered by,、um, to allow、um, Ethereum deposits. So essentially, on Verto, all you need to do is log into MetaMask, and you can send your Ethereum to a Trading Post. We we do all the work behind the scenes for you,、um, and you can receive either R or profit sharing tokens. And we also hope that this is going to allow. Easy access into the Arweave community and ecosystem, and as well as the profit sharing tokens and community ecosystems. So, speaking of tokens, let's talk about our token. So, this is the Vert. <laughs> It allows platform governance. It also allows us to hold these this network of trading posts accountable for any actions that they take. So, because we're decentralized. You know, if a trading post decides to receive tokens and take a malicious action on the platform, they must have staked Verto tokens to be able to be considered trading post. So, if they're malicious, the DAO can vote to slash their stake, and they'll be at a deficit.、Um, and also, Vert token holders earn a volume weighted index of all of the profit sharing tokens being traded across the exchange. So, for example.、Um, Let's say Sam has ten percent of the token supply. That in that case, he would earn ten percent of any of the tokens being traded on the exchange of the of the fees generated. And also, since we're about to release this Ethereum integration, users can also earn Ethereum as well when it's traded on Verto. 
So we're really, really excited about the growth here. We, we launched into a, um, a, let's see, what's the word? A gated alpha, which essentially means that only, only users that were involved in the Arweave community previously were able to get into Virto. And so from that, we, we've had over $100,000 exchanged. And we also have many, many organizations, and it's constantly growing, trading on Virto. Um, we also have some integrations going on with other communities. So we built out this library in JavaScript that allows other profit sharing communities and applications to integrate Virto trading functionality directly into their applications. So for example, on community XYZ, as you saw with, with Cedric, um, you can now go to community XYZ and purchase tokens through Virto straight on community XYZ. Um, and the library is super simple to use, which we're happy about. It's only three lines of code to, to get off the ground there. So let's talk roadmap. Um, so Q3, right after the Open Web Incubator, we, we did our alpha launch. That was very successful, very happy about that. Um, our next biggest milestone is we're working towards an Arweave and Ethereum bridge, which is ready. We'll be releasing it in the coming days. Um, and we're also, all while doing this, we're working on getting our first hire and closing our first fundraising round, which is, we're, we're ecstatic about that. Um, next biggest milestone are bonding curves. We want, we'd love to turn this into an AMM um, because, you know, we got to fix the liquidity problem across the, the, the site. It, it, well, it's not a problem, but we want to put a long-term solution in and not have a traditional order book. Um, and we think the best way to go about doing this is by building in uh, a bonding curve. So making it into an AMM after that, we'd love to make sure that we got everything audited and release beta in Q2 of 2021. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can see my information there. And if you want to get in touch with the community or, you know, just start talking to people, find, find me somewhere else, you can go to virto.exchange slash chat. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tate. Yeah, it's been really incredible to see how the other profit sharing communities have started to integrate the Virto.js library into their code bases. So now you can do stuff like trade profit sharing tokens directly from uh, Cedric's community XYZ. And there's other projects um, that we'll see next week in the pitch day. Uh, that are using Virto.js to trade things like revenue streams for albums and things that are essentially deployed on a uh, Bandcamp-like system. So the artist comes along, they, they deploy an album that people can download if they tip, and then you can, um, yeah, you can buy into that profit-sharing token and you can do so directly from the, uh, from the web app itself using Virto.js. So it's just unbelievably uh, exciting to see where all of that is going. And I would just like to thank all of the founders and uh, all of the investors and community members that came to the, the uh, program uh, today and to invite you all to come to the pitch day next week. This is really just about a third of the applications that have been built on top of the Arweave network in the last 100 days. Um, there's just no way we could have fitted it all into one show. So yeah, we'll be releasing details of how you can join that um, presentation next week uh, via our Twitter. And yes, yeah, so I would just like to thank all the founders for the incredible work that they've put in. This is by no means the, the ending point. This is just another stop um, on the way in the middle of the journey. Uh, but it's amazing to check in and essentially show off what everyone's been working on. Uh, thank you to everyone that came along on YouTube as well. And to everyone that's on Airmeet, all of the founders will be around on the tables. Um, we can now go and 